What's up? Welcome to Classic Movie Gush number 17. It's Christmas time. I hope you're ready because we are bringing on the holidays. Melissa Tag, are you ready for Christmas? Totally. I was ready for Christmas a long time ago. Yeah, are you a yeah. uh, are you a are you a Christmas decorator? Um, I am. I love Christmas decorations, but I really especially love them when somebody else does the work of putting them up. Yeah, that is taking nice, them huh? down. Mm-hmm. But I do like yeah. Christmas decorations. <laughs> People think I'm a total Grinch because I don't decorate and I don't put up a tree. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's okay, you know. It's not. It's not because I like hate Christmas. It's just because my dog doesn't need a tree. Well, <laughs> True, and but, you know, we go to other people's houses. And so you watch there. you watch Christmas movies, so yes, that can make up for, or at least you're gonna watch Christmas movies this year. <laughs> A lot of Christmas movies, and I'm gonna watch some new ones thanks to you. So we're starting off now with White Christmas. Alrighty, here it comes like one of the most famous movies of all time, and I hadn't seen it, but now I have. <laughs> and I've watched two musicals in a row now. That's very good. Basically because of you. Well, um, I like but, to have a positive impact on people. Yeah. <laughs> so Wait, oh, let's, Well, here's a question. Okay. Did, which did you like better, Sound of Music or White Christmas? Oh. Which, which was more bearable for you? Oh, why did you ask me that? Because it's a fun question. <laughs> Boy, if I had to watch one multiple times, I probably would say White Christmas (laughs) because it's shorter. (laughs) Did you not like White Christmas? I didn't hate. I didn't hate White Christmas. (laughs) White Christmas definitely has more humor. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So on Danny K grounds. Um, and on grounds of it's like you know four hours shorter than Sound of Music, I would take White Christmas. That's a slight exaggeration. <laughs> Not much. So tell the good people at home what is White Christmas about? All right, White Christmas is about two guys who were in the army together, um, Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye. I think their names in the movie are Bob and Phil. Anyway. Yeah, Bob Wallace and Phil Davis. Yes, good job. And um, they, um, Danny Kaye's character saves Bing Crosby's character at one point. He breaks his arm in the process. And from then on, he's able to convince Bing Crosby to take him on as a partner in their entertainment world following the war. And so they go on to become famous entertainers. And they're doing really well in showbiz. Uh, but Danny Kay gets more and more frustrated that Bing Crosby's character keeps them busy all the time. And he wants to find him a girl and get him to settle down and uh, give him more time. So he hooks them up with a sister duo, um, singers, dancers, that kind of thing. And they end up following these girls all the way to Vermont to an inn, and who should happen to be running the inn but the old general that both Bob and Phil used to serve under in the war. And his inn is failing and falling apart, and it's not snowing, so nobody's coming to visit. (laughs) And they kind of, they decide to help him with his business by bringing their Broadway act to his inn in an effort to save the inn. Wow, you're you're really good at synopsizing. Synopsizing things. You're really good at that. Um, yeah, and they go to Vermont, and the Christmas magic has to happen. This film was made in 1954. It stars, as you said, Bing Crosby, who was just a massive entertaining legend. Mm-hmm. Um, huge, huge hits. The guy just knocked out. And um, White Christmas, the song, remains the best-selling single of all time. Uh, it was directed by Michael Curtiz, who we met during our talk on Casablanca back in mm-hmm. CMG 15. Mm-hmm. And um, and this was also a movie we selected instead of Holiday Inn, which uh, is kind of similar. They actually filmed it at the same inn. Mm-hmm. It has White Christmas, the song, in it. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, we were talking a little bit about how some of these movies are controversial. And actually, Holiday Inn, it's either edited or not shown because... There's some blackface, and there's these racial stereotypes. 
And even in White Christmas, it just shows the America of the 1950s completely sanitized. Like, there's literally, I don't yeah, even think, a sure. black person in the entire film. And it's, it's a weird experience, but it's also like a time capsule when you look at films like this. Um, but, you know, it was, it was a segregated America, so the, the, the title, White Christmas, becomes kind of ironic if you're mm -hmm. looking for social commentary. Um, but I wanted to say this. Holiday Inn featured Fred Astaire, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And this movie, White Christmas, was supposed to also reunite Crosby and Fred Astaire. But yes. that didn't happen. No. Fred Astaire was retired at the time. Mm. He was in one of his retirements. And so he decided not to come do it. So then they rewrote it for Donald O'Connor, who you like, yes. from Singing in the Rain. And um, then he got sick or something and had to yeah. pull out. So they rewrote it again for Danny Kaye. Yeah. So... They kind, of, they kind of went through a lot of people. And this is kind of cool for me because I think you said it, and then some, a couple other people told me, like, you're going to like Danny Kaye. And it's kind of true. If you like Donald O'Connor, you're going to like Danny Kaye. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I know that you've mentioned before how he's so funny that they kept having to do retakes because everybody mm -hmm. was cracking up. In the one scene where the guys actually dress up as the sisters and, and do yeah. their act. Um, you can see Bing Crosby's like really laughing. You mentioned that, and it's yeah. really obvious, and it's really great. It's kind of like when Saturday Night Live has skits just go wonky, and, the, mm -hmm. and they're, it's so much funnier when they're you know laughing. When they're laughing, and actually that even wasn't that wasn't even written into the movie originally. They were just goofing around on set, and the director thought it was so funny that he decided to add it into the movie. Um, yeah, and they did so many takes of it, and every time Bing Crosby burst out laughing. So you can tell you can tell he's laughing, and there's a spot where Danny Kaye is laughing too, and it's that song is a blast. I love that part of the movie. I was thinking about how you know everybody's kind of tired of how Hollywood rehashes franchises, and it's constantly doing remakes and constantly doing sequels, and it's a proven formula today. It's going to make more money. Spider-Man 17 is going to make more money than some creative original flick, right? Yeah. Um, but this. This kind of shows us that Hollywood was never beyond rehashing franchises. I mean, they just kept churning out the same story. Mm -hmm. They were literally trying to do the same actors singing the same songs because mm -hmm. it's a proven successful formula. So what they ended up with, uh, we've talked about the male leads, but uh, let's talk about the ladies. Okay. <laughs> so, so tell me about these sisters. Okay, there's, there's sisters played by Rosemary Clooney and Vera Ellen. Vera Ellen is a very famous dancer. Um, she's well-known. She's popular in this movie. Um, Rosemary Clooney was more well-known as a singer. Um, and she plays the older sister in the movie. And she's Bing Crosby's love interest. And if I would have one pet peeve with this movie, it's her. I cannot stand her character. And every single year I kind of forget that I don't like her. And then I watch the movie and I'm like, yeah, I still like the movie, but I hate Rosemary Clooney's character. She's so horrible. And Bing Crosby could have done so much better. But other than that... It is so interesting <laughs> that you say that. Now, <clears throat> when I watch things, I, I know how my brain works. And sometimes I think, okay, I've got to be like proper for society and not say something. I gotta make sure that I'm not coming out of left field. I couldn't stand her. Don't and horrible. I had no idea you were going to say that, you know, as I was watching the movie. Um, interesting, you mentioned that she plays the older sister. In real life, she's actually seven years mm -hmm. younger than Good. Vera Allen, but Vera Allen yeah. totally plays the younger Anger. sister. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I think Rosemary Clooney was only like 26 when she made this film. And Bing Crosby was like 52. Yeah, so that's quite the age gap. Bring there. on the creep meter. Uh, yeah. Seriously, though, her character is so <laughs> horrible. Okay. <laughs> I just need to say this. One of my things that I can't stand in stories, if there's a romantic angle to it, is when the entire obstacle of the relationship or the breakup is based on a misunderstanding. And that's what happens in White Christmas. The whole thing that breaks up Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney is that she misunderstands something. One conversation could solve everything. But instead, she gets all passive-aggressive and just moody and leaves. And it's horrible. I just can't. I will, so I will agree with you with an amendment. Um, you're totally right. So there's, there's, there's a kind of this theme through the movie of... I don't know. There's actually a line I wrote down, the only line I wrote down from the movie, and she says, Rosemary Clooney says, why do people need to stick their noses in other people's business? And the wife of the general, the major general who runs the inn, 
Um, she's eavesdropping, and she basically gets something all wrong. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a problem if the only thing killing a romance is a misunderstanding. I have a problem, a big one, with the way it was executed here for exactly what you said. Because it's not like someone heard something and had no chance to have that conversation. Right. <laughs> she continues to be in scenes with him and acts like a total stupid shrew. Yeah. And you just hate her by the time the third I missed know. encounter has happened. At so any I point, am exactly on board with yeah. you. At any point, she could have said, hey, I don't think it's nice that you're exploiting the general. And he could say, Bing could say, I'm not exploiting the general. I'm doing this really right. nice thing. And she could say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I love you. Let's sing a song. This is a musical. And everything would be fine. But no, they drag this on forever. They do. Ugh, I just don't even know why Bing goes after her. But <sighs> hey, I'm, I got that I'm with you. <laughs> especially, especially a guy, let's face it, his character is like completely anti looking for a committed relationship. Like, yeah. He's, he's going to fall head over heels for her. Yeah. Like, really. what does she do to make that happen? There's no, like, magical yeah. moment with her. It's just no. like, run, dude, run. Yeah. Bing Crosby, by the way, has Pittsburgh connections that I do like. He became part owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates. You know, that's, like, the one sports fact I actually knew. Yay! Like, there's something about he wouldn't watch some big game or something and was too nervous yeah. until we went to Paris or yep. somewhere. And some big game, something. she says. Uh, yeah, it was, was Game 7 of the 1960 World Series <laughs> when the Pirates beat the Yankees and Bill Mazeroski hit the only home run to ever win a World Series walk-off home run. And as a matter of fact, it went over a wall that I walk past every day because it's at, it's at Pitt, the old stadium. So nice. there's a little there's a little fun fact. By the way, I found this out. Danny Kay in 1977 also decided to become part owner of a baseball team. Oh, really? He bought, he bought into the Seattle Mariners for like, I don't know, three years. And uh, huh. I'm not sure how that worked out. But yeah, it's true. We're probably not going to get to talk about Danny Kay too much. There might be like mm -hmm. one other movie, two, maybe two mm -hmm. that we would really go after. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, that reminds me, one of the things that I think is cool, um, we, we see everything, you know, with, with the internet in the last 10 years, there, there is not a world that is hidden to you, right? There's no mystery very much. Um, and I've always liked it, especially when I was younger, when movies would take you into a world that you typically wouldn't be able to see, right? Or even maybe a modern example of a TV show, like a newsroom show, where you could see the behind the scenes of a TV production. I was thinking that when they show Bing Crosby's character, Bob Wallace, he goes on this um, Ed Harrison TV show. And back then in 1954, the shot actually shows the whole production, right? It shows the TV mm -hmm. audience. It shows the producer trying to get everybody to clap and then to be quiet. I bet that when this movie came out in 1954, that was riveting to audiences who had never seen really behind the curtain of how television production happened. That's probably really true. That's a good point. TV was in yeah. its infancy. Yeah, it was very new then. I don't know. That just really struck me as that, that would have been pretty neat. Good job, White Christmas. Good job, White Christmas. <laughs> we'll, give you, we'll give you points for that even though you have. So Rosemary Clooney, back to her. Um, you know, she uh, – a little bit of information about Rosemary Clooney because we're definitely never going to be talking about her again. <laughs> Um, we may. Have, she she was famous. Maybe we shouldn't blame her for her role, but you know. Maybe not. Although I will say this, she wrote two autobiographies. Oh, really? Um, she talked about her struggles, her lifelong struggle with being bipolar. Oh. Um, so she definitely had some mental health issues, and she was part of Bobby Kennedy's presidential campaign. So that was a big 1968. He was probably going to be the president. And instead, he was assassinated in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And she actually heard the shots that killed him. So I think she was, like, wow. right there in the vicinity. And when oh. she died in 2002, one of the pallbearers was her nephew, George Clooney. So there is like a that. family connection. Yeah, she was even on an episode of ER once. Wow. Uh, now yeah. I'm tapped. That's all the Rosemary Clooney <laughs> I've got. You had more than I did. <laughs> I just had disdain for her. That was all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, do you do you have a favorite scene in this movie? A favorite I, part? I, I do. It's a really weird scene to be my favorite scene, but every time I watch it, I think the same thing. Um, there's a scene early in the movie 
where Danny Kay has just tried to set Bing Crosby up with another showgirl or something and Bing has wants nothing to do with it. So they go into like their dressing room and all that they actually do in that scene is change clothes and hang up their clothes. But they have this really great conversation and the dialogue in that scene is just fabulous. They just it's banter back and forth. And you usually think of banter between like the the hero and the heroine in a movie, but this is between the two males. But it's just it's great that like there's a quote, okay, I'm probably not gonna get this right, but one of the things that um being no, Danny Kay, he's trying to convince Bing Crosby that he needs to just settle down and have a bunch of kids because if he does mm. that, then Danny Kay will finally get some time to himself. And Bing Crosby's like, I'll get around to it one of these days. And Danny Kay says something like, um, when what's left of you gets around to what's left to be gotten, what's left to be gotten won't be worth getting whatever it is you've got left to give. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And Bing Crosby's reply is like, well, when I think of... What, or when I can figure out what that means, I'll come up with a crushing reply. I just It's just like witty dialogue. I really enjoy it. And they, yeah. both characters get a chance to express what they want, what their goal is in the movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's a random scene. Not a lot happens, but it's always my favorite for some reason. So what I'm hearing is your favorite part of White Christmas is the scene where Bing Crosby takes out his pants. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing about... That that would attract me. <laughs> okay, however, no, however, for, uh, Rosemary Clooney is not in that scene, so that's partly part of why I love it. But <laughs> look, my, as, as I'm skating through my favorite scenes, it's like guaranteed I eliminate all the ones that Rosemary Clooney is in. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I also would add this. When I watched the movie, I hadn't seen it before. That scene riveted me because I don't know if you're aware of this. You probably are since you've watched it. It's one continuous shot. Yeah. From the time they step into that, I actually made that comment like, "Wow, the camera never cut away." Mm-hmm. And that that dialogue, like, yeah, they're just changing their clothes, but it's like in a fitting room, and there's a lot of movement. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. so natural, and it is it is just unbelievable. The camera never cuts away for that entire shot. Mm-hmm. That was impressive to me. Very impressive, and you, it feels like a real conversation, and they're moving around each other, they're hanging up their clothes, uh-huh. everything. It's just it's very natural. It's a good scene. It is a very good scene, and uh, I think you could probably use it to teach, um, yeah. to teach something. But it also kind of gives you the sense, like, this almost feels like this came from, from a theatrical side. Mm. Um, but that fits, right, because of all these musical numbers. And some of them are clunky, <laughs> for sure. Um, they've kind of got the thing, like, from Singing in the Rain, where, okay, we've got a big show coming up, so let's rehearse our numbers. So yeah. you actually watch the rehearsals. But some of that's fun, right? Vera Allen... She's a contortionist. She's kind of amazing. Um, but I really liked the scene early on where uh, her and Danny Kaye do the first dance number. Oh, yeah, that's and, a and they end thing. And they end up swinging around the poles. Yeah, that's cool. Um, it, it's so fluid, and it's kind of like a cross. You know, you could see a little bit of that uh, blue-collar style of dancing, but it's got a little bit of elegance in it, too. Mm-hmm. Um, that was pretty fun, especially the part where they're doing the uh, the dancing. That's kind of like their first yeah. meet and greet. yeah. And once again, you know, in musicals, when you meet somebody, you break into song. Yeah, that's well, pretty much anything in a musical, you break into song and dance. <laughs> I will say, there's music, Sound of Music. All most of the songs in Sound of Music continue the storyline. Like, and White Christmas has a lot of the songs that are like they have nothing to do with the story. They're there purely for show. I mean, at least like you said, it's set in the, the entertainment world, so they have an excuse for putting the song in there. Um, but some of them do get a little bit long, but it's still impressive to watch. I was thinking uh, the whole idea of them trying to do something special for the Major General, and I'll admit it has it has that sappy emotional payoff when they finally surprise. Um, they don't even deal with the housekeeper. Like She goes from being this stupid woman who ruins everything, <laughs> and all of a sudden she's like, just they've dealt with it, I guess, and we don't get to see it. She's just um, automatically forgiven. But you know what it reminded me of? Mr. Holland's Opus. I haven't watched that forever. So, you know, like the old teacher doesn't think his life's amounted mm-hmm. to anything, and he comes back, and all of his former pupils are there to reward him. It kind of had, yeah. like, that Mr. Holland's Opus feel at yeah. the end. So then they yeah. sing their song, and they wear their stupid red outfits. <laughs> they're not stupid. They're just... They're pretty stupid. They're just santa E. <laughs> Let's put because on our crushed red velvet Santas. But it, it is a Christmas movie. Pajamas. 
It's a Christmas yeah. movie, and Christmas doesn't really have that much to do with the movie, so they had to do something at the end, you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they did. And it snowed, and everything yeah, it was snow, safe. Yeah, and everybody's happy. Um, okay, I got two, two fun facts for you, and then I throw okay. it to you for final thoughts. All right. Fun fact number one. Oh, it's actually kind of a it's kind of a sad fact. Oh. Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, and Rosemary oh, yeah. Clooney all died at the age of seventy four. So that happened. That's but I I bring up that because Bing Crosby famously died like two weeks after singing that duet with David Bowie in nineteen seventy seven. I did not know that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you've got to watch the Bing Crosby David Bowie Little Drummer Boy. It's like a stage well, thing, like Little Drummer Boy. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> rum, 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 rum. Yeah, like it's it's all stage. Like you know, Bing Crosby knocks at the door and and he's like, "Hey, David, how's it going? Let's sing a song together." Ah, <laughs> uh, great. And, and here's my other final fun fact: in the movie, they don't say the Ed Sullivan show, but clearly the Ed Harrison show is supposed to be like mm -hmm. Ed Sullivan-ish. Yes. The guy who plays Ed Harrison is actually an actor named Johnny Grant. I did not know anything about Johnny Grant until I was looking up stuff on this film. He did not have a long acting career, but he was the honorary mayor of Hollywood. And he was the one who would present all of the unveilings of the stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame from 1960 until his death in 2008. Whoa, that's a long time. And 1960 is also the year the Pirates won the World Series, <laughs> and Big Crosby hey. went to France because he didn't want to watch it. So he came <laughs> home, watched the video, and put it on a shelf in his wine cellar. And nobody knew it was there. He died in 1977. In 2010... Someone was going through his collection, and they found the tape. It was the only recording in the world of the 1960 Game 7. Whoa. And so it was it was put on television, and it was a huge event, and it was Bing Crosby's wow. copy. It was put on TV? Yeah, well, the MLB Dude. Network had, like, a huge event. They brought in all kind of former Whoa. players. And, um, nobody had seen this footage. It was never they didn't like record TV and save it back then. So. Oh yeah, I guess not. There's my fun facts. I don't know if you're, you're going to get rid of I'm so, I know. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I, don't, I don't got any more. <laughs> okay. So, people should watch this movie because. Well, there's. I mean, you should just should watch it. It's a Christmas classic. I mean. It's a Christmas classic. Just. <laughs> Go into it knowing that you might hate Rosemary Clooney's character, but that everybody else is really great in it, and it's a lot of fun, and it'll make you feel happy and wonderful. And, um, you know, check out Holiday Inn, too, because it's kind of the same movie, but different a little bit. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> and answer this week's poll question. What's worse, having no snow on Christmas or Rosemary or Clooney? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say her. I should say her character. Yeah, you're, what's her you're, character? You're all nice in Iowa about it. What? I wasn't I that nice. Any, I don't have anything against her. I should say her character. Right? Yeah. All right, so... Betty Hayes, that's her character's name. There you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> white Christmas. Have one. Have a white Christmas. <laughs> have a white Christmas. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back with yet another Christmas movie. Um, and this one... It's another one that you haven't seen, right? <laughs> it's another one I haven't seen, and we're going to hold off the suspense of what it is because I'm excited to talk about this because this has a very special Melissa Tag secret fun <laughs> fact connection. Yes. We're going to drop it like it's hot next week. So check out White <laughs> Christmas. See you later.